This is Si Wing Yi from the Yi Real Estate Network. And today's topic of my presentation is accelerating post pandemic population migration to Florida and to Texas. All right, so this is a sort of a generic presentation is uh, based on my opinions, based on my background and experience, of course. And this disclaimer is such that if you want to go over your unique situation, you have to consult your own advisors, your own financial advisors, whether they are legal advisors, tax advisors, or uh, traditional financial advisors, all right? If this is for illustration purposes, and this is my disclaimer. So, uh, this is a high level. So um, I'm focusing on the uh, the Texas and Florida market. And the specific is that, uh, just to uh, reiterate the, the top two or three fastest job population growth and uh, population growth is in clearly in the state of Texas and in Florida. So uh, I'm going to discuss about uh, the new constructions, all right? I mean, if you buy new construction, single family homes and duplexes in a fast growing path of growth markets, such as, as in uh, Austin Metro, the 75 mile radius in Austin, Texas and the Metro, and also Central Florida, and for that matter, and also Southwest Florida, in which uh, Cape Coral, Lehigh Acres, and LaBelle, Florida is located within that sector of Florida. And Central Florida, which is, covers many different cities within the 75 mile radius. And of course, uh, in Austin, Texas, Metro, that covers the 75 mile radius, up and down that uh, the highway, the freeway, where uh, you will have a lot of smaller cities uh, within a one hour drive of uh, the core of uh, uh, of uh, Austin, which is like Temple, Texas, Benton, and the outskirts of uh, uh, of Austin. So, uh, what's happening with these markets is that that you know builders and are building new construction homes in a very uh, fast growth. So, uh, what I've been seeing, and this is based on my uh, knowledge, here's what's happening. So, let's uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna develop a three to five year plan for all of you right so again this is uh these numbers are very generic uh you can you have we have to adapt a little bit differently numerically based on the slight variations of the purchase prices with this new builds new construction okay with the builders so typically i'm going to use an example of 165,000, but it could be less or could be slightly more slightly more in these two market the new constructions uh, they could be as low as 139,000 to uh, to be as high as 225,000. Those are the parameters. Or uh, those are single-family homes uh, rentals. But in duplex, we can go over a little bit later anywhere from around uh, uh, how much? Around 300 uh, something thousand on a duplex new construction also. But the, I'll go over more details. But this is a potential three to five year plan for many of you. And this is based on 20 to 25 percent down payment. So typically, you buy a new construction for 165,000 dollars property, single family home. You put 20 percent down payment. Your total out of pocket is 33 grand plus closing costs. So your total out of pocket around 38 grand to finance a uh, purchase. So therefore, your loan balance is 130,000. So uh, when you at the at the because the investor is getting such a break with the, with the buying directly with the builder through our network, we have some tremendous value proposition, meaning that we're buying at a below retail market value, typically 10 to 20% discount from the uh, where, uh, from the retail buyers. So having said that, this example 165K, uh, for example, has been sold in the open market for a retail buyer for 195K. So you are right off the bat, you have a walk-in equity around 30 grand on this particular, uh, particular example. So bear in mind, your purchase price is 165,000. Uh, the, uh, the retail uh, value in the recent purchases is 195,000, all right? So just keep that in mind for right now. And the uh, three to five year projection is, again, this is just for illustration purposes. I'm, we're gonna, I'm gonna use 
annual appreciation rate on those new purchases. So therefore, even though you buy for 165K, the projection uh, rate is using the uh, the real value of a recent purchase on this floor plan, which is 195K, all right? Understand that? So at 7% appreciation at the end of the first year on this uh, value, 195K is the annual annual appreciation at the end of 12 months is 13,650, right? So 13,650, Add on to 195 k initial market value equals at the end of the first year 208,650. All right, okay, so far so good. This is not rocket scientist. So, if the second year of ownership, the property continue to achieve a seven percent appreciation rate, which could happen because of the um, the uh, path of growth and the uh, lack of homes, the demand for homes exceeds supply in all this market, as we mentioned. So, so the second year, the 7% appreciation uh, will be multiplied by, you know, by this, by, by the new price, right? 208,000, uh, 208,650 multiplied by 7% equals 14,605 at the uh, appreciation at the, uh, at the end of the second year. So 208,650 plus 14,605 equal, right, right here, equals 223,255, right, at the end of the second year, right? So follow, follow along with me. Then let's talk about the third year. So so the, the new bench, uh, benchmark will be the, the beginning of the uh, second year. You have, a, you have a starting point of 223,255. Again, multiply by this projected 7% annual appreciation rate for the third year equals 15,627. So 223 plus 15,627 equal at the end of the third year, 238,882. Follow me? So therefore, at the end of 36 months, based on the projection and this example, 238k 882 which is a fair market value right minus your loan balance of 130,000 at the initial right purchase 3 years back so you have an equity of 108,882 make sense so far pretty simple right now what what is your potential exit strategy at the end of the third year at 7% appreciation i i you i put down 5 year also, the five-year plan, in case you may not get 7% appreciation for the first three years, you may get maybe 7% for the first, first year, maybe 4% second year, you know, whatever. But I give it a three to five-year plan, okay? I'm going to try to make it as realistic as possible, all right? So at the end of the day, anywhere from three to five-year uh, point uh, price point, this number, you know, should reasonably uh, apply. So, so you have an equity of 108,882, right? Now what? So there are two strategies I have for you. So one strategy would be, bear in mind your total out of pocket at 20% down, maybe even 25% down is around 37K to 40K cash, total out of pocket, including closing costs. Keep that in mind, your initial of 37 to 40K uh, total cash down payment. I'm gonna show you how the power of leverage can create wealth in a mere three to five year, and not even talking about long term. Although the ideal world for real estate investors are the buy and hold for for a long, long time, for a lifetime, and even beyond as a legacy transfer, right? So, but this is again just one of my example of an exit strategy within three to five years for those of you that may want to consider that. So the first exit strategy at the end of three to five years, given this equity you have, 108K, is refinance. So let's go to refinance scenario. The market value at the end of third year, 238K, multi multi multiplied by 70% loan to value. Okay, I'm, I'm putting the hat of a, of a loan agent. So 70% loan to value multiplied by market value, 238. So let's determine how much can you refinance and keep this property, uh, keep, keep it going. So 70% so multiplied by 238 equal 167, right? 167 minus 130K loan balance, 
47K is the potential equity cash out you ha have available. So at the end of the third year or the fifth year or the fourth year, whatever, you, 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 if you're going to refinance the property, you could potentially have around $47,000 of free additional cash. With that money, I'm just giving you another example. You could put the down payment on a finance purchase, 20 to 25% down payment. You can buy two or three properties in Buffalo and Niagara Falls, for example, right? So when we talk about leveraging, making your return very, very high using this kind of exit strategies. Or if you want to sell your property, which I do not recommend unless you really, really have to, at the end of three, three to five years, you may want to do a 1031 tax for exchange, right? So the example is, okay, let's, let's say you can do that. 238K selling price on a 1031 tax for exchange minus a loan balance, 130K, you still have the same $108,000 profit, right? No capital gains as long as you identify, you know, uh, properties within 45 days or the selling of the uh, original um, uh, selling price. Then, you know, as long as you uh, you close escrow on the uh, replacement property within 180 days and not da da da. I'm not going to go over the tax situation in detail due to the lack of time. But the but the 108 profit when you do a 1031 exchange, no taxes right uh then equals uh, uh minus some uh, costs closing costs and few other fees so your net cash available which is 100 grand so this 100 grand on a 1031 you could uh, uh buy five or seven properties in buffalo and niagara falls or four properties uh in in uh, alabama right at 100 grand each Right or two or three properties in Florida at 200 grand, whatever, at based on the financing. So you can leverage this 100 grand on a 1031, not pay the taxes on 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 the 1031 exchange. You're able to buy five or seven properties in Buffalo, Niagara Falls, four properties in Alabama, right? Financing that is all financing, and two or three properties in Florida or Texas, right? At 20 uh, 25 percent down, so forth and so on. So see how it goes now. How about the maples, right? This is a very good, potentially doable exit strategy within a mere three to five years. All right, so let's uh, uh, let's continue with the presentation. And the topic of this, you know, presentation, yeah, how uh, you know how you can accelerate your the uh, after the post pandemic, you know, uh, migration of population. So, giving the uh, the uh, you know the uh, Okay, let me see how to explain this. Now, although this is a tale of two cities, you're, we're comparing New York State, mainly New York City Metro, okay, not Buffalo, okay, versus the state of Florida. So uh, it's just sort of a pandemic uh, apple to apple comparison. But we can also use the same thing with California versus Texas. So what I've been seeing is that based on this uh, the uh, congestion, uh, the overpopulation, and the high cost of living uh, in in mainly in California to the western region of the U.S. and then New York State in the eastern portion of the U.S. I, I have to, I'm going to uh, predict that uh, because of the, uh, uh, the the new normal, many high tech companies and many other companies are allowing workers to work remotely, right? So that could have a population uh, migration effect in the in the uh, western half of the U.S. and also the eastern half. So I, I suspect because of the of the the uh, the uh, the freedom to work at home and to work remotely for many of white collar employees moving forward post pandemic, that many of the uh, employees will uh, choose not to live in California, in the Bay Area anymore because of the high cost of living, et cetera, right? Uh, and then they could move to uh, to some other affordable areas, you know, but mainly, again, I don't wanna spend too much time on this. Uh, so the Western region of the US made from California, when they exit, they can go to Texas, all right? Let's, let's, let's use those examples. And on the Eastern portion of the seaboard, uh, mainly New York State. New York State, you know, happened to be the second 
most populous state at least two years ago. Now, Florida have exceeded New York as the second populous, most populous state in the in the union. So, so the uh, because of New York and with the uh, New York City specifically being such a uh, pandemic city, right? With all the infections going on and the and the cold weather and the high state income tax and and the congestion and the high cost of living and the uh, freezing weather for most of the year. A lot of not only a lot of baby boomers and retirees are moving to Florida, uh, but uh, uh, also millennials are moving to uh, you know mostly to Florida. I'm not saying all of the, those people because of uh, you know the, uh, obvious reasons. Florida, uh, just like California, but Florida is very affordable and has been the fastest growing state in the union for the past few years and will continue to do so. So, so uh, again, the, the high level recap in terms of pandemic movement of migration of people based on my estimation, you hear it, you heard it here first from me, from, from the horse's mouth, me. But later in the next few years, you will see some economic, economic data, economic trends that will validate my personal opinion. I, I, I believe that, right? I could be wrong, but you know, uh, I don't have a crystal ball, but I'm just making some predictions and trends and and it will, uh, for the most part, will be validated, you know, sooner than, than you think. So just, uh, again, you heard it from me here. So again, the people from the Western part of the US, many of them uh, will go to different areas, of course, other than the Bay Area, right, for those that want to leave. Uh, uh, but uh, most of them will go to Texas for obvious reasons. Texas with a high tech, especially in Austin, will have a tremendous amount of growth in that market. And of course, those live in the eastern part of the US, you know, New York State, New Jersey, Massachusetts, Chicago, those cold weather areas, people, they will migrate. They will accelerate the migration into warm weather areas in the Southeast, right, Southeast. But Florida, which is part of the Southeast, I have to believe is the main recipient of all the acceleration of migration into mainly Central Florida and Southwest Florida, okay? Right, and this is just an example right here. It shows that uh, why Florida is much more desirable to live in New York. You, know, you look at the population difference, you look at the state income tax difference, which is dramatic, the state budget balance with, versus ending, you know, COVID-19 uh, infections. Uh, Florida is very, very minimal compared to New York City, that is, okay, and the depth. All right, so uh, with that in mind, let's continue with the next presentation. With the final presentation, so I can only talk about Florida based on this particular uh, slide deck, and uh, just bear with me, okay? Just have an open mind. I'm about to conclude within 10 minutes. Okay, uh, so currently, all right, here we go. This is a slideshow for Central Florida. Uh, I could make the argument, you know, it also applies to uh, Southwest Florida as well. So. Uh, you know, of course, Jean Gill, I'm going to mention, you know, going to have a video. She can talk about all the highlights of this uh, Florida presentation, but I'm going to go over my specific uh, areas. Uh, I'm going to go over the six floor plan, the six different products that she's offering, and I will do it very quick. I'm going to go over the, the cash flow analysis portion of it. So, so all right, so uh, I'm not going to talk about all the uh, related areas which Jean Gillum's video can talk about. Okay, the first property and the first floor plan I'm going to discuss, again, I have to do it real quick, okay? So uh, bear with me, this could be a longer presentation than usual. But uh, let's go to the cash flow analysis on Palm Bay, right, Palm Bay. Uh, so uh, oh, by the way, all these six floor plans, there are some properties that are already uh, to be sold. Then there are a certain percentage of the property are still under pre-construction status, meaning you know, it'll be built within three to five months uh, for the rest of this year. So, uh, you know, so inventory, you come and go. So you have to, you know, talk to me directly or talk to a Gene Gillum. Uh, or in the case of Texas, you can talk to Ken Renner directly. Uh, so we can determine what are the available homes available to to sell, what are what homes are completed, when or homes are still about to be completed. So you can make your decision accordingly. All right. So for Palm Bay. Uh, four bedroom, two, all these new constructions, right? Everything we're talking about. Four bedroom, two bath, uh, 1,700 square foot. And the uh, our price, 
Control my network so uh, we get a discount, right? Which is amazing. Uh, a retail buyer wouldn't have to pay 239k on this new construction, but your price is 220. So you know, walk in equity, right? That's the whole idea behind it. So let's use the benchmark 220k on this purchase price, and the uh, monthly projected rents is anywhere from 1650 to 1800. Very very realistic. By the way, the, at the end of the day, uh, what I hear from Jim Gillum is uh, no surprise. Even currently, we're under you know very uh, tremendous pandemic scare, and uh, we have no how who knows how long this will continue. I know, I mean, the, uh, we are in a recession and all that, and, and unemployment rate is, has been very high. But uh, you know, there's a, there's a there, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, but we are getting some slow. Uh, reopening of the economy at, uh, at pretty much all parts of the of the U.S. Uh, is a stick by stick situation. So, so I feel very, very uh, optimistic about the future. You know, the recovery I feel would be, you know, very, very fairly quick. Uh, so, uh, but but then again, no one knows for sure, right? But uh, no, as an investor, if you have a job, a, a job stability, and you have the financial resources, and you have the motivation. To do real estate, uh, residential investing, uh, the way we talk about it, is is a, is a tremendous asset class, uh, which will be least affected by this pandemic situation. Okay, so regardless of what you hear, I know the media always paint a very very negative picture. They you know they, you know they uh, they always inject uh, uh, negative uh, uh, information on a daily basis. Uh, it, you know it can just paralyze a lot of people, but you have to separate the uh, the fact from fiction and uh, make a decision accordingly. So, all I, all I can say is, uh, in Austin market uh, and in the Florida market, in all the market that we're presenting, just so you know, uh, we have a very little effect. You know, or just uh, very very few. The you know the occupancy occupancy rate in all our markets that we're presenting. You know what they are? It's around ninety five percent. And very very few people defaulted on their rent or on the mortgage, uh, in and also uh, all the properties that uh, we are, we have sold recently uh, have been rented with real quick within few days within few weeks uh, way way less than thirty days. So there are like we typically we see like twenty to forty rental applications per property that we close. So there's an abundance of people who want to rent. Because, like I said, population and job growth still continuing right now in the neighborhood and the market in the community that we're promoting these new bills in Texas and in Florida. So, uh, you know, if you don't believe me, right, whatever, that's fine. Yeah, that's your prerogative. But do your research. You can contact my property manager. They will validate what I'm saying. The, at the end of the day, the, in the rental market uh, it is amazing, right? I mean, we, you know, there's so much. You know, crisis going on out there, and yet the residential investment real estate uh, property that we've been promoting in the areas that we're promoting is just going by normally. It just is truly, truly amazing. So, yes, there. You know. Anyway, so uh, let's go with the cash flow analysis. I don't want to um, go over my exceeded time. So this 220k a price in Palm Bay, it rent for 1650 to 1800, depending on you know what time of the year, you know what situation. At the end of the day, you put 25% down payment, right? You have a net monthly cash flow of 361 at the only low end, and on the high end, net monthly cash flow is 511. So we're talking very, very good cash flow, very good cap rate, and all that stuff. So, so tremendous amount of uh, 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 return uh, for you. So, all right, let's go on. Uh, that's your first floor plan in Palm Bay, selling still, still selling very quick rental. Uh, Get rented very, very, very easily, which is uh, surprising to some of you, but not to me. Okay, second floor plan. Let's go over second floor plan, which is located in Kissimmee, right below Orlando. Uh, Kissimmee, Kissimmee, where Disney World is located. So this floor plan, this community also very, very desirable. Otherwise, Jean Gillum would not promote them through the builder that she used. So this floor plan here in Kissimmee, single family home. Again, the retail market price is 230K, but uh, yeah, to uh, investors to buying through my network, you get a discount once again at 225k. 225k, four bedroom, two bath, 1600 square foot, two car garage, 
uh, is amazing. Uh, warranty, 10 year warranty, all the kinds of uh, warranties. Anyway, the growth uh, projected rent is 1650. So 1750, so monthly net cash flow based on 25% down is uh, 394 to 494, monthly net cash flow. Once again, uh, very good return. The numbers meet my expectation. The cap rate is around 7%. Cash on cash return approximately, you know, 15%. All the numbers look really good, gets rented very, very quickly. Okay, the second floor plan gives me third floor plan is in, yeah, two duplex floor plan in Point Siena, which is again the south of uh, a part of Orlando, which is one hour below, like 30 miles away. Very fast growing. So the first uh, duplex floor plan is, uh, with, uh, you know, uh, two doors, right? Two families renting, right? Uh, so six bedroom, four bath. That tells me it's a three two, right? Three bedroom, two bath per side, which is amazing. Twenty seven hundred square, uh, twenty seven eighty four square foot. So each door, each each side, is around almost fourteen hundred square foot. But there's no garage. That's fine. So the uh, the market price is three eighty, right? On on this duplex. So one unit is one ninety. Yeah, 190K per unit. So let's break it down so you guys can understand me better when I, when I break it down. 190K per side. Per side, rents for, see right here, around uh, 1550, am I right? Yeah, 1550 gross rent per side, 1550 from a 190K purchase price per door, which is meet my expectation with good cash flow. Okay, so if both doors are, are rented, uh, it's very easy to rent at 25% down payment. So you can have a monthly net cash flow with 944 on both doors. So each door will get you almost $450 a monthly net cash flow. So very, very good returns, very good cap rate, da da da, cash and cash returns. So, okay, so this is one floor plan at 380K, very, very good. The second floor plan in Point Siena. Uh, the price is a little bit cheaper, I think, right? The first plan is 38. This floor plan duplex, another community is uh, 316, okay, for the entire uh, purchase. And uh, if, so the market, the, the retail market is sold for 350. Again, you got about 36, $34,000, you know, uh, uh, gap in discount savings if you buy through our network, right? All right, so 316, so therefore, wow, you know, again, three bedroom, two bath on each unit. So each unit on this duplex, again, is almost 1,400 square foot. There's no garage, that's fine. And then at 25% down payment, which is minimal for duplex or higher, uh, you minus all the tax, all the monthly obligations. Then at the rent at 2650, uh, on both doors, so per door is it rents for like 1325 minimum per door. Uh, the worst case scenario, if it rents for uh, maximum 3100 both doors, so each unit would be like uh, uh, 1550. So 1550 gross monthly rent from a uh, uh, on per side per side would be 155k, right? 160k. Almost 160k per door on this duplex at max rent at 1550. We're talking about very, very high monthly net cash flow. Okay, trust me on it, right? All right, so again, on a low rent range on both sides rented is 770 net monthly cash flow on the highest rent production on both doors is uh, monthly net cash flow is 1220. I mean, we talk about real good cash flow on this duplex situation. Again, okay, follow me. So it exceeded my minimal benchmark for, you know, capitalization, really cash and cash return, da, 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 da. You get my uh, drift, right? So uh, so that's how many floor plans. I, I think uh, I'll win over three floor plan, right? And then the villages, right? The villages located in the central Florida in Ocala area, uh, around uh, like maybe like 30 miles northwest of downtown Orlando. So uh, for those of you who know what, what villages is, are like a tremendous retirement community uh, for age 55 people and over uh, like about 50,000 people living 
the city of villagers, mainly people 55 Asian over. Of course, we are renting these properties for anybody, not just age 55 people. And a lot of people are moving to this area. Wait until you will hear some of these uh, cash flow numbers, which Jean Gillum has will discuss as well on her video, separately from my video presentation here. Right. So. Uh, much to my surprise, I, I thought, you know, there are no most single family home new, new construction in Central Florida, usually are more than 180K. That's what I thought until recently. Now, I don't know how Jean Gillum does it. I know how well she, you know, she knew what she's doing. She's been in the market for many, many years here in Central Florida. This single family home new construction located in the close to villages is three bedroom, two bath. A mere, you know, a little bit small, 1,700 square foot, but still have a one car garage, right? So, uh, cookie cutter uh, is amazing, very good price. The retail price for out people out there, of all owner occupied uh, people, they want to buy, they have to pay 155K. And for investor, buy, uh, we allocate for investment homes through our network, you only pay 139K. Think about it, 139K, such a great value on a new construction single family home like this. Three, two, right? Three, two, I mean, it's amazing. All right, and then wait until at 25% down payment, you can put 20% if you want, but look, look at the uh, projected rent. And this is real, this is not fake. The minimal projected rent to buy this cookie cutter, very low cost, good value uh, single family home in this area, 1250. The, uh, the, higher, the higher rent range at 1350, uh, somebody will keep asking like, in a what situation you'll get these two rent we don't know maybe the you know, the rental season is summertime spring summer which is right now you might you most likely you can get three thirteen fifty and then when the winter time when you try to rent which is lower rental market you will most likely get a you know lower rental uh, range at twelve fifty all right so that's how that's the reason we put this in here but you know it's almost one percent rental value ratio which is amazing you put twenty five percent down even at this low rent range, 1250, you will get a monthly net cash flow of 455, which is amazing. If you get a, if you get lucky enough, you know, to rent it during your high rental season during the summer, the, the rent could be 1350, 1350 on a purchase price only 139k. So at 25% down uh, payment on the financing at a by the way, financing, you're getting like around 4.3%, which is a historical interest rate. Another great reason to buy right now in spite of the crisis that we're facing. So look at this. I mean, if you get 1350 rent at 25% down payment, your monthly net cash flow is a whopping $555. That is mind boggling. You're not gonna get these kind of numbers other than in Texas and Florida, anywhere else in the country. If you, you know, you can come to me, you can debate me all you want. You know, any other 48 sticks out there, you can find any new construction in a fast growing location. You can get a rental property for a new construction based on these price ranges, based on this growth rent uh, and based on this rate return. I mean, I welcome you to challenge me, but you're not gonna win, all right? That's the bottom line, okay, forget it. Don't waste my breath. Okay, another, uh, another model plan, I'll be real quick. On the same area, another, I mean, uh, close to the villages. This one, uh, you know, higher square footage, as you can see, a couple of hundred square footage higher. So the, therefore the price is higher, 159K on this one, but, uh, but the projected rent is 1450 at the low end, 1550 on the high end. At the end of the day, monthly cash flow is five, either 540 to 640. My, oh my goodness, this is too good to be true. But you know what? It is true. Some of these numbers are very conservative, believe it or not. You know, we want to uh, uh, <coughs> uh, under promise and over deliver, right? So uh, if you want to validate the numbers that I've been uh, <laughs> telling you, talk to our main property manager for all these properties, the realtor, the realty doctors. Okay, which uh, Jim Gillum's son, uh, Tom Wicklow, is the owner. And, you know, by all means, contact his company to validate all these properties they've been renting for a while now. These are true numbers. Okay, Ooh, that's enough, all right? That's more than enough. Thank you so much for attending. 
Now, this is a long, long video, I understand, but uh, you know, you play it once, you may not totally get it. Play it again and again. We play the video so you can digest what I'm talking about. I know I'm I'm speaking very fast. I have a slight accent. I get it, some of you may not understand <laughs> my, my presentation, <laughs> even though I've been in the US for more than 50 years, just so you know, right? More than 50 years I've been in the US. All right, anyway. Uh, <laughs> Uh, not that you care. All right, so that's that's the end of my presentation. Thank you so much, and um, listen to Jean Gillum's twenty whatever twenty five minute uh, video presentation, so we could so you can you know connect to uh, our respective thoughts. At the end of the day, to recap, I mean, even under this unique crisis that we're facing, uh, and we don't know the future is very uncertain. But if, as an investor, if you're motivated, if you're in a good situation, if you have, if you can overcome fear, if you're very, very courageous, uh, right now is still the best ever to buy properties uh, as an investor. Okay, thank you so much. This is Si Wen Yi. Thank you for listening. Have a nice day. Goodbye.